Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part two of the collage drawing assignment. And I wanna go over a little bit today about how to transfer that image to a piece of paper so that we can start drawing on it, all right? So let's go into the document camera and I can show you what we're working with. All right, so as we left off last time, I designed this collage with a background image kind of a foreground landscape image, and then this caribou, which is hard to see in the light, but if I turn it a little bit, you can see it there. Okay, and the goal today is to get this onto this, right? So <clears throat> to do that, I think the first step that we're gonna do, and I'm gonna probably do a lot of pausing in this because the steps can be a little bit long, but essentially, you know, I wanna map out an eight by 10 rectangle on this piece of paper so that I can work one-to-one -one as I draw this image onto the page. So, you know, very simply, uh, this overall sheet is 12. So I can easily just map out <clears throat> one inches on either side. I always like to make um, two marks and strike a line. So I'm just gonna take my um, 2H pencil because it draws the lightest. I don't need a really heavy outline. I'm just gonna mark it at one inch. And down here, at one inch, Okay, and then strike a line across. So something like this. And we get a line. All right, best way to get a nice straight even line. Uh, just going to pause quickly and do the rest. Okay, I'm back. I've got my 8 by 10 map laid out on the paper. It might be a little hard to see because I've actually drawn pretty lightly with it. So using the 2H pencil, don't hold it like a weapon and really draw a heavy line. You just want to use a little bit of light pressure when you're making a line because we could have eventually erased that um, outline if we needed to. Um, okay, so a, a couple of things about this. Now, uh, I'm going to give you two different options to this. <clears throat> Some people really like to just kind of go for it and draw what they see, and I'm, and I'm totally on board with that. Um, if you want to do that, if you're comfortable doing that, I'm also going to show a technique for those of you that maybe have a little less experience drawing, which is totally fine as well. Both methods artists use quite a bit. So in a one-to-one -one ratio like this, I can just simply go straight across and start to set up some guidelines, right? So the height of the this top of this mountain is like right about here. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the horizon line here is right about here. I can draw that across really lightly. And, uh, you know, if I go vertically, same sort of thing, I can kind of map out some things. So the width of the mountain is about here. Okay, it definitely cuts down this direction. <clears throat> and then, you know, the caribou starts up around here somewhere. So this is just kind of blocking out the basic kind of placement of these objects. And let me draw a little bit darker so you can see. But horizon line, top of the mountain, kind of width of the top of the mountain, angle that this comes down, uh, basic kind of positioning of the caribou is something like this uh, in the composition, okay? Like if, if this is, if you feel, um, you know, ready to try something like this, all you'll need to do is just start out with some basic guidelines and then just kind of start to sketch. And when you sketch, what I like to do is kind of <clears throat> start with straight lines. So straight lines, straight lines can add up to curves. Uh, you know, now if you think about like a 3D model and 3D animation, everything is made up of points and lines in space. And so those points and lines can actually add up to a curve if there's enough of them. But if I, if I just kind of look at the angles going all the way around this, right, kind of sketching the angles that I see as I go, then I can go over that with a darker, more confirmed line and start to create the outline in which I see. Kind of gives you a basic roadmap as to how to follow the composition. And with that, you can create something more precise on top. So again, I don't expect anyone to be able to draw a perfect line from point A to point B. We all need guidelines and help and tools to help us do that, all right? So here's the basic kind of sketching as I go to get the shape. Again, straight lines, thinking about angles, what they add up to, um, kind of comparing, okay, across from here, I see where the top of that opening is, <clears throat> right? And I can map this out. Again, super light, not putting down a lot of pressure, just kind of mapping as I go. And then over that really sketchy, out of line, I can look carefully more specifically. I slow my mark making down. I make more specific types of marks 
as they grow, go over the composition uh, into that form. Okay, so that is one way of starting. We want to start with a linear outline of our overall composition, lightly in pencil, so that we can gauge um, <clears throat> a comparison between the two. And what you always want to do is make sure that you edit. What I can see here is this opening is bigger than this opening, right? So I need to kind of restructure this to make it a little smaller uh, and, and go with that. So, so that's a beginning method that can totally work for you if you feel like you just want to dive into this. Now, if you want a bit more slow calculated approach, I'm going to go into the next step that can do that. I'm just going to pause so I can set up and start over another piece. Okay, folks, so the next step here is uh, another approach that we can take is actually to use what's called the grid system to help us draw from. So what I'm doing right now is I'm mapping out a one inch grid over the top of my eight by 10 image, my collage that I made. And for this, I'm just using a ballpoint pen because it's a little bit darker and I can clearly see the lines. There's also a regular size, so that really helps. So I'm just kind of going, I'm using my cutting mat because it has a ruler on it. So that's the advantage of using these mats. But just very carefully measure from both sides and just draw over the top, you know, fairly darkly with a ballpoint pen, colored pencil may work, uh, felt tip, you know, thin marker might also work, or even just a darker pencil. But what we want here is a grid over the top of our image that we could reference, right? So when we're drawing, we can actually work in quadrants. And what I mean by that is if I'm starting over here and I count down one, two, three, four, five squares, I can see that right here about is where this starts and I can follow this up to about three quarters of the top of this square. I can do a little line across there. I can start to map out square by square to map out my image. So what I'm gonna do here is take this piece of paper, right? And I'm just going to map out a grid on this. Now again, really, you know, highly recommend that you make marks on both sides, right? So if I measure this out right now, I've got exactly 10 inches. Um, always mark the length of the ruler. What I mean by that is map out here the ruler. Uh, don't move the ruler a whole bunch of times. So mapping out one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches, and just kind of going along down the line, right? So I'll do that top and bottom and then just simply connect the lines as I go. All right, so I'll pause again, get this mapped out and we'll talk about drawing. All right, so I'm just finishing up my grid lines on the paper here, you know, lining everything up across from one another. I'm not putting any pressure down on the pencil, but rather just letting the pencil do it, the work itself. You may not be able to see these lines um, too well in the video. Um, it is because I'm, you know, trying to remain really light on my with my touch on the surface so that I can erase these grid lines out later right so we're just using this as a guide that we will eventually remove so if I hold this up a little bit you can see that I've got this grid that's really light hardly any pressure um, really just trying to work as minimally as possible to get this but what I have now is I have two identical grids okay they are the same scale Okay, and this gives you a great opportunity to really carefully map out where your image is on the composition and how you can uh, really render those lines. So if we just start, I'm gonna bump to a darker pencil. I do recommend, you know, working lightly with the uh, H pencil to begin with because it is super easy to erase. You know, if I take the needed eraser, I can easily erase back the lines pretty easily. So if I look over here, I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up to the caribou and uh, I go over one and a half squares and that's where I start the composition, right? So, I, and again, block it out pretty simply first. I'm just gonna make, you know, I'm gonna come up here. The next one starts to do a little bit of a jog in and out like that. Uh, it starts to meander over to this side. And again, I'm just kind of looking square by square, uh, going piece by piece. I can always refine it later. You just wanna get the basic angles down. Again, hardly any pressure on my pencil allowing the pencil to just sort of lightly drift on the page, using quick short marks so that I can um, easily sketch. I hey, lost my place. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, and now I'm starting to, um, you know, look as this angles in, right? So I'm just 
again, kind of like mapping this out ever so slowly, following each square. And by taking it in small bites like this, you can end up with something that is you know, fairly precise in terms of its overall composition and, um, and form, right? So again, I'm just going to kind of loosely do this. Right, so that gives you the basic start of that outline. Same proportions, right? So we know that that works. And, um, and I'm lightly mapping this out. What I would do next is I would go in to this and really carefully look and follow these lines with a little darker, more confirmed line. Still not terribly hard pressing down, but you know, slowing down, that's the thing, right? Your first lines should be sketchy and loose. It's like when you're writing a paper and just kind of mapping out an outline, right? Then you go in and refine and use, you know, more fleshed out sentences and better grammar, right? Instead of bullet points. That's kind of what we're doing here. We're trying to get the finesse of these outlying forms. So take it square by square, piece by piece, uh, to a place that you can get a nice uh, contour outline drawing. Uh, once we get the outline, I do want you to start thinking about those interior lines. So I'm going to take a little pause and I'm going to map this out. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more specifically about the caribou because that is probably the most complex thing to draw in the composition. Uh, and then, you know, just show you where we're ready to go so we can start adding value, line, texture, tone, all that fun stuff. All right, folks, we got to the hard part, the caribou. we we'll zoomed in here so you can see what I'm working with. I'm counting over five squares, one, two, three, four, five, and that gets me here. If I go up a little bit, we can see the tail of the caribou is right about here. But this, I'm just gonna plot a few like little marks. So this is roughly kind of where the tail ends. Um, if I go down at an angle through these next um, two squares to about the middle, I get the slope of the back. So I'm just gonna kind of rough it in like this. That's where it starts to change position a little bit and angle down uh, into this uh, proportion this way, All right? So I'm just gonna kind of really roughly get the basic shape of this so i'm boxing it out and this is what artists do a lot when they're drawing is they kind of like box out the form and get it as close as they can before working in more of the details right so again don't worry about trying to do the perfect outline as you go give yourself a bit of a road map that you can follow antlers are tricky i'm going to start with the dark one first and build the other ones around it so the one in front is what i'm going to concentrate on uh, and for now, I'm just going to give myself a place marker. Kind of goes this way, goes this way, kind of comes up here, um, this way, here, there, and then one going that way over there. All right. So that's kind of the the basic roots of what we've got going here. So let's, uh, you know, this this kind of hump of the back is pretty easy to start to think about. I'm just going to draw a curvilinear line here. I see the line slope down a little bit, um, come up again for the tail, cut across here um, into the form. Actually, it's a little bit sooner, isn't it? Cuts down a little sooner. If you make a mistake, no big deal. Go with that needed eraser, cut it out a little bit. Comes down here for the hind section, uh, for the back of the leg. And we have um, the leg, you know, it's tricky because it comes up above this area, down into this area, back into that form, comes up and around. You know, watching me kind of meander through this, I, what I have to do is just get something down so I can edit it. You know, that's the main objective here. This line that kind of curves through, I can really start to follow that as it goes down in. So again, I'm not too worried about being perfect, you know? I just need to get something down on the page so I can look and edit. The belly kind of cuts up higher here, that's good. My original blocking is too low. The leg that cuts down here somewhere into this sort of form, you know. So again, I'm trying to work really light. I'm trying to work really loose. Um, it's not, it's gonna look really bad before it looks good. Uh, but overall, what you need to do is, is start with something, look, edit, change, refine, keep working, keep building, work lightly so you can always erase it and kind of go from there. Oh, this guy is looking pretty ugly right now, isn't it? It's okay though. The eyeball thing around it like that. Okay. So 
getting not great, but I'm getting there. The ear is actually up here, isn't it? There we go. And the eye is in the total wrong place. I need to erase that. Start over. All right. Here's about where the eye is. The snout goes down this way more and down this way. Antler was in the wrong place too. So there we go, starting to work on it a little bit, getting it closer. Now you can see this is starting to shape up. I still got a ton of work to do, but you know, again, we will just need to take this little by little, piece by piece. You can see that see that I'm starting to shape up more and more. I'm just going to go in and erase further. All right, and kind of keep working with this. Let me just pause it for a sec. All right, I'm back. I didn't do anything except for erase it down, focus in a little bit more. Uh, what I'm going to do is knock this back a bit further, change to a 2H pencil, a little bit finer lead and sharper tip. And I'm just going to try to really go in here and look super close and try to get these contours in. Because, uh, you know, it's really important to get the, the contours, how they look, um, to the, be able to accurately do, you know, depict what you're working on. A little bit of a nostril here, just kind of comes down. Actually, you know what my weapon of choice is, which I haven't talked about? It's a mechanical pencil. Yep, not the fancy wood pencil, but the plastic mechanical pencil. What I like to do is take the sandpaper pad and scratch it on the surface like this to get a point. It's got a nice white eraser that I can go in and work with. And uh, can get some finer marks here. All right, let's see if we can solve this. It's always a challenge. That's okay. What, what more do we have to do but to, on a rainy Saturday afternoon, but to try to draw a caribou? All right, folks, I've gotten a little farther along. I think I'm good to start, right? This gives me the basic map of my composition. What I want to do next before I start working into this, and this is key, is to get rid of those grid lines. So on some of the lines, I've kind of darkened up a little bit, so I make sure they don't go away. I want to keep my horizon line, but I can always bring that back in. And just take the kneaded eraser and um, scrub out those grid lines. And you will have, a, you know, nice completed drawing that's ready to start. So work through this whole thing, get all the grid lines done. Uh, once you have those out, we can start talking about step number three, which is really starting to bring some value and tone and other lines into this composition to really finish it out. So that's about it for step number two. Uh, again, you can sketch directly from uh, observation, use the collage as a direct one-to-one -one map so you know where things are laid out both horizontally and vertically. Uh, or you can grid up the entire composition, which you know is really helpful for getting placement, angles, everything in there, and map out your composition. Again, what I'm looking for, I would say by Tuesday, the beginning of Tuesday at the latest, is to get all of the composition done, meaning get the collage completed and get the lines mapped out on the composition, get your rendering in and erase out the grid so we can spend Tuesday and Thursday really working on tone, value, texture, line quality, details. That's what we're looking for to really finish this up. Uh, student question about the What is Art project. I'm going to be announcing that also on Tuesday, so don't worry about it. It is not due Tuesday, so you don't need to think about that. 
but I am going to be um, introducing it Tuesday, and I'll give a new deadline for that, a new due date. So that's all for now. Happy Saturday. I'll see you soon.